Hello, everyone. I'm Reverend Nick Bullitt, the Engagement Catalyst here at One Spirit, and I'm here today with Miranda McPherson, and we're here to talk about her upcoming workshop. How are you? I'm great, Nick. It's really sweet to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And can you share with us a little bit about your professional and spiritual background? Yeah, I can't wait. And just if you've worked with me before, welcome back. And if you've never worked with me before, welcome in. Mm. I first got on the spiritual path as a teenager and I was cracked open into a state of boundless love during a period of depression. So I've been a deep practitioner of meditation and all sorts of prayerful practices and in self-inquiry since then. I trained originally at um, the New Seminary with Rabbi Joseph Gelberman, which is where I met Diane Burke. We became instant friends. And it was Diane who said to me, upon meeting me for the very first time, before we'd even exchanged any words, she just looked at me and said, you should be an interfaith minister. And I heard in my heart, that's the truth, even though I didn't know what that was. So I quickly learned what that was. And long story short, Rabbi Joseph Gelberman asked me to found the first ever interfaith seminary in Europe, which I did at the age of 26. Wow. So I was the founder of uh, what is now One Spirit Interfaith Seminary or Foundation in London. And I did that for the first 10 years of its inception. I created the program, especially the spiritual counseling and spiritual awakening aspect of the program. And then it was time for me to do other things. And so it's in the years since I left the seminary and since I left England to come to the United States that the work I was really put on this planet to do began. That is the work that I call ego relaxation. And it's all about how we open into grace, uh, not just a beautiful state, but grace is the primordial foundation of our being. It's how we open to receive the blessings of grace that we need to grow and evolve and thrive spiritually. And how we open to the transforming power of grace so that we can become more graceful human beings in the world and let our noble qualities shine forth. Mm -hmm. So I run now a Sangha or two Sanghas in California. And the name of my organization is Living Grace. That's really what I'm all about. That's beautiful. And your workshop is called Receiving the Blessing of Grace. So what yeah. inspired you to create this workshop for One Spirit? The receiving the Blessings of Grace is really about opening up to receive the deep nourishment that we need to evolve spiritually and to thrive. And it works on helping us to cultivate the classical virtues that mature us as souls. And so on this workshop, I'm going to be taking everyone through four main things, how to truly open up a level of trust that brings us the spiritual resilience and the faith that we need to address complexity and challenge and uncertainty without getting caught in fear. So trust really resolves the issue of fear and helps us to let loving presence pervade every last corner of our being. We'll also be looking at how to develop deep humility, but most misunderstood and what I will really be opening up is how humility actually leads us into a celestial state of grace where we can open into a level of refinement that many of us might have only read about but that is very available to transition into deeper dimensions of consciousness and allow and the next level of surrender we'll also be cultivating uh, the all important but you know misunderstood quality of patience that helps us to be with paradox with the both and nature of things at the deep non-dual level you and i and everything and everyone we all already that our nature is divine being or god only we're also simultaneously works in progress and we need to learn how to work with the both and nature of things to work with our ego obstacles and limitations with integrity and patience but at the same time with devotion and with kindness to persevere, but without the push. So it's more subtle than it often seems. And then 
we'll also be opening up what I call the joy of being. Joy is really one of the deep nectars of the human heart, the heart deeper than our emotions. And even though we might be going through hard times, even though, you know, we are all having to adapt, at the same time, there is a, a depth of ananda, really, love, joy, bliss, that is your heart itself. And so we'll be taking you there. The format is going to happen on four evenings because it allows us time to go deep in each session, but to have some time to digest and integrate our experience and then come back for more. We also chant and pray a lot. And so I uh, have my harmonium here and I have a really sophisticated sound set up. So nice. the music and the chanting is absolutely right there in the mix at each segment of the course there'll be an inquiry question to really work with experientially in a dyad there'll be some chanting and some prayer and there'll be some guided meditation and there's rich teaching and of course interactive sharing to see what it is that we're learning and realizing in the field of our togetherness what's really fun for me about teaching at one spirit is i can really roll out my deep appreciation for what I call the mystical golden thread that appears throughout the various traditions in specific ways, but actually ultimately is independent, is not owned by any tradition because it's just deep truth. We'll be drawing from practices that have come alive from my own inner life of sitting with Buddhist monks, of sitting in Ramana Maharshi's cave, of you know, sitting in Christian churches, all of it. That's very much where I come from. I'm a very much an interspiritual being. I always sort of tune in when I'm asked to teach somewhere and just feel, what do I feel is going to really best serve? I just had this really strong hit to teach on receiving the blessings of grace, which is a very nourishing, very rejuvenating body of teachings. Think that that's really what we need. There's some wonderful teachings that are going on around resilience at the moment and um, working with race, which I think is really important. But I also think it's very important that we learn to nourish ourselves and drink in all that goodness and loving presence and let it pervade our whole being, body, heart and mind.